Hello, hope you're doing okay at the present time in amongst all of the changes and chances that we seem to be dealing with at the moment. Um, this current week is actually meant to be Christian Aid Week and normally we'd have some sort of fundraiser to, uh, to provide some funds for an important charity that we as a church have supported for, for many years. Um, you can still donate online uh, at christianaid.org.uk and on the website you'll find details of the good work that Christian Aid gets up to and also a, bu a button to, uh, to donate on the website as well. Hopefully, perhaps later in the year, we might be able to do something like a, a retiring collection when we can meet again as a congregation and have some sort of fundraising event as well. Um, I'm not going to do a sort of complete plug for Christian Aid Week, though it is a, a charity close to my heart, which I'll explain why in a minute. But actually, I just wanted to, to take a bit of time to think about the idea of generosity and of giving, particularly in the charitable context uh, of what feels like a very difficult time. In, in the national life. Just to explain why uh, Christian aid particularly uh, is of appeal to me, uh, it goes back to my childhood. My late father used to coordinate the, uh, the house to house envelope collection, if you remember that a few years ago. And uh, so I used to go out with my parents to do that. And uh, also it was a good excuse to stay up beyond bedtime as a kid to help count the money after the evening collection. Uh, as I got older, when I would have been 16, I suppose, and could have done the, the collecting myself as well. So I was glad to be part of that, to be involved. But also I learned about what an important charity Christian Aid is and the amazing work that they do on the international stage. And I think what's always impressed me is the fact that they work with local partners on the ground to uh, ensure real change and sustainable change and transformation uh, through their charitable aims and work. One of the bits of opposition that we used to come up against, though, when we were collecting was the phrase that's often trotted out, which is charity begins at home. Now, I must confess, I've never understood that phrase. Uh, where is home? Is it my house? Is it my street, my town, my county, my country? People who look like me, people who share my views, my values, my outlook on life? I don't know. I'm nitpicking a bit. I appreciate that. Um, but stick with me because I want to, uh, to unpack and explore that idea a little bit more. And I'll come back to that charity begins at home idea, but perhaps a different way of looking at it uh, towards the end. I've always struggled with that phrase, uh, charity begins at home, uh, partly in the light of a growing understanding of the Christian gospel and the faith. Jesus was famously asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And he said that you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. And you must love your neighbour as yourself. Who is my neighbour? came back the question. And lo and behold, Jesus goes on to tell them the story of the Good Samaritan. I'd encourage you to, to look it up. I'm not going to tell you the story now, uh, but it's Luke 10 uh, verses 25 to 37. Luke 10 verses 25 to 37. At risk of spoilers, uh, it's basically it's somebody who nobody expected to help who helped who put others to shame by helping. It was a stranger, someone from outside the regular community who responded, somebody who challenged the assumptions and the stereotypes that were prevalent at the time. One of my fears with lockdown and the current crisis is that there's a possibility, indeed perhaps a danger, to put it strongly, that it might narrow our horizons a bit. We're literally narrowed to being at home, although those are slowly relaxing bit by bit. We're being told to, uh, to stay alert and to be vigilant and to stay at home where we can now. But that might also narrow our horizons in terms of who we view as our neighbour. It's not just the people we stand and wave at on a Thursday night as we clap for the key workers in the NHS. But there's also that danger of that view of needing to look after number one or to focus on those close to us. And there's nothing bad in that per se, but we just need to make sure that in doing that, we don't harden our hearts to those uh, who we perceive as being sort of outside that circle or that network that we have. 
And we certainly need to make sure that we don't harden our hearts in response to what we perceive as a threat or a scarcity of resources. Just remember a couple of months ago, the stockpiling of loo roll, of pasta, baked beans, and all sorts that went on when people were suddenly very worried about how we were going to provide, how we were going to have sufficient resources, and so on. Hopefully those fears have been delayed now and we give thanks for the hard work of distribution forces and shop workers and so on. And we've seen a very different perspective on that. The other thing is we need to make sure is that we don't allow our fears or our frustrations at unjust and broken systems, be they political or whatever. We need to make sure that those frustrations aren't taken out on the most vulnerable people in our world. We need to make sure that our horizons remain broad and our hearts remain open. Because the issues and the implications of the COVID-19 crisis are affecting each nation very differently and each person within them very differently as well. And some nations are better equipped to support and help other nations. And actually, I think without going into too much detail at this stage, I think this nation is much better equipped to help others than some other nations in the world. And that's why we need to make sure we keep an international perspective on our charitable giving and our charitable outlook as well. To come back to that phrase, charity begins at home. The word charity comes from the word caritas, which means love. Uh, if you know your King James Version of the Bible and 1 Corinthians 13, where we talk about love, uh, that's actually translated in the authorised version as charity, which is a very interesting uh, perspective when you're thinking about charitable giving. Have a read through 1 Corinthians 13 and put the word charity in for love once again. And we had that line from Jesus about the love, that, love the Lord your God and love your neighbour as yourself. We need to respond and we need to give within our means, but we need to give with open and with generous hearts. And I don't necessarily just mean financially in that respect, but we need to remember and to give just as God's heart is open to all. God's heart is open to all without prejudice, without exception. And each person is made in the image of God. God's love transcends any boundaries that we might want to put in place, that we as a human society uh, put in place as well, sometimes for good, sensible, pragmatic reasons. But we need to make sure that our hearts aren't restrained or boundaried necessarily as a result. Charity does begin at home, but actually not as we think. Charity needs to begin in the home of our hearts. It needs to begin from a place of love. It needs to be a home that is warm, that's generous, a home with doors that are open to those in need. Now, whatever your favourite charities are, and each of us in our own way have uh, different charities that we like to support, and often life will dictate and our experience of life will dictate what charities we support. But perhaps let's make sure that we keep a balance of local, of national and indeed international charities as well. Let's make sure that our charity, our love, is one that has a home that looks beyond boundaries to one that shares and delights in our common humanity. May God bless us all and may God help us always to keep our hearts warm and generous. <laughs>